Advanced Trauma Life Support, Wikipedia Article Audio Advanced Trauma Life Support is a training program for medical providers in the management of acute trauma cases, developed by the American College of Surgeons. Similar programs exist for immediate care providers such as paramedics. The program has been adopted worldwide in over 60 countries, sometimes under the name of Early Management of Severe Trauma, especially outside North America. Its goal is to teach a simplified and standardized approach to trauma patients. Originally designed for emergency situations where only one doctor and one nurse are present, ADLS is now widely accepted as the standard of care for initial assessment and treatment in trauma centers. The premise of the ADLS program is to treat the greatest threat to life first. It also advocates that the lack of a definitive diagnosis and a detailed history should not slow the application of indicated treatment for life-threatening injury, with the most time-critical interventions performed early. However, there is no high-quality evidence to show that ADLS improves patient outcomes as it has not been studied. The first and key part of the assessment of patients presenting with trauma is called the primary survey. During this time, life-threatening injuries are identified and simultaneously resuscitation is begun. A simple mnemonic, IBD, is used as a memory aid for the order in which problems should be addressed. Primary survey Airway maintenance with cervical spine protection the first stage of the primary survey is to assess the airway. If the patient is able to talk, the airway is likely to be clear. If the patient is unconscious, he slash she may not be able to maintain his slash her own airway. The airway can be opened using a chin lift or jaw thrust. Airway adjuncts may be required. If the airway is blocked, the fluid must be cleaned out of the patient's mouth by the help of suctioning instruments. In case of obstruction, pass an endotracheal tube. The chest must be examined by inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Subcutaneous emphysema and tracheal deviation must be identified if present. The aim is to identify and manage six life-threatening thoracic conditions as airway obstruction, tension pneumothorax, massive hemothorax, open pneumothorax, flail chest segment with pulmonary contusion and cardiac tamponade. Flail chest, tracheal deviation, penetrating injuries, and bruising can be recognized by inspection. Subcutaneous emphysema can be recognized by palpation. Tension pneumothorax and hemothorax can be recognized by percussion and auscultation. Hemorrhage is the predominant cause of preventable post-injury deaths. Hypovolemic shock is caused by significant blood loss. Two large bore intravenous lines are established and crystalloid solution may be given. If the person does not respond to this, type specific blood, or O negative if this is not available, should be given. External bleeding is controlled by direct pressure. A cold blood loss may be into the chest, abdomen, pelvis, or from the long bones. As of 2012, use of RVEA is not supported by evidence. While it may help control bleeding, there is a risk of arterial thrombosis, and other than in those with factor 7 deficiency, its use should be limited to clinical trials. During the primary survey a basic neurological assessment is made, known by the mnemonic AVPU. A more detailed and rapid neurological evaluation is performed at the end of the primary survey. This establishes the patient's level of consciousness, pupil size, and reaction, lateralizing signs, and spinal cord injury level. Breathing and Ventilation 
The Glasgow Coma Scale is a quick method to determine the level of consciousness, and is predictive of patient outcome. If not done in the primary survey, it should be performed as part of the more detailed neurologic examination in the secondary survey. An altered level of consciousness indicates the need for immediate re-evaluation of the patient's oxygenation, ventilation, and perfusion status. Hypoglycemia and drugs, including alcohol, may influence the level of consciousness. If these are excluded, changes in the level of consciousness should be considered to be due to traumatic brain injury until proven otherwise. The patient should be completely undressed, usually by cutting off the garments. It is imperative to cover the patient with warm blankets to prevent hypothermia in the emergency department. Intravenous fluids should be warmed and a warm environment maintained. Patient privacy should be maintained. Circulation with hemorrhage control When the primary survey is completed, resuscitation efforts are well established, and the vital signs are normalizing, the secondary survey can begin. The secondary survey is a head-to-toe evaluation of the trauma patient, including a complete history and physical examination, including the reassessment of all vital signs. Each region of the body must be fully examined. X-rays indicated by examination are obtained. If at any time during the secondary survey the patient deteriorates, another primary survey is carried out as a potential life threat may be present. The person should be removed from the hard spine board and placed on a firm mattress as soon as reasonably feasible as the spine board can rapidly cause skin breakdown and pain while a firm mattress provides equivalent stability for potential spinal fractures. A careful and complete examination followed by serial assessments help recognize missed injuries and related problems, allowing a definitive care management. The rate of delayed diagnosis may be as high as 10%. Mannequin surgical simulators are widely used in the United States as alternatives to the use of live animals in ADLS courses. In 2014, PETA announced that it was donating surgical simulators to ADLS training centers in nine countries that agreed to switch from animal use to training on the simulators. Disability slash neurologic assessment. Additionally, anesthesia trauma and critical care is an international trauma course based in the United Kingdom that teaches an advanced trauma course and represents the next level for trauma care and trauma patient management post ADLS certification. Accredited by two royal colleges and numerous emergency services. The course runs numerous times per year for candidates drawn from all areas of medicine and trauma care. Specific injuries, such as major burn injury, may be better managed by other more programs. Exposure and environmental control ADLS has its origins in the United States in 1976, when James K. Steiner, an orthopedic surgeon piloting a light aircraft, crashed his plane into a field in Nebraska. His wife Charlene was killed instantly and three of his four children, Richard, Randy, and Kim sustained critical injuries. His son Chris suffered a broken arm. He carried out the initial triage of his children at the crash site. Dr. Steiner had to flag down a car to transport him to the nearest hospital. Upon arrival, he found it closed. Even once the hospital was opened and a doctor called in, he found that the emergency care provided at the small regional hospital where they were treated was inadequate and inappropriate. Upon returning to Lincoln, Dr. Steiner declared, when I can provide better care in the field with limited resources than what my children and I received at the primary care facility, there is something wrong with the system and the system has to be changed. 
Secondary Survey Upon returning to work, he set about developing a system for saving lives in medical trauma situations. Steiner and his colleague Paul Skip Collicott, with assistance from advanced cardiac life support personnel and the Lincoln Medical Education Foundation, produced the initial ADLS course which was held in 1978. In 1980, the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma adopted ADLS and began U.S. and international dissemination of the course. Steiner himself recently recertified as an ADLS instructor, teaching his instructor candidate course in Nottingham in the UK, July 2007, and then in the Netherlands. Since its inception, ADLS has become the standard for trauma care in American emergency departments and advanced paramedical services. Since emergency physicians, paramedics, and other advanced practitioners use ADLS as their model for trauma care it makes sense that programs for other providers caring for trauma would be designed to interface well with ADLS. The Society of Trauma Nurses has developed the Advanced Trauma Care for Nurses course for registered nurses. ATCN meets concurrently with ADLS and shares some of the lecture portions. This approach allows for medical and nursing care to be well coordinated with one another as both the medical and nursing care providers have been trained in essentially the same model of care. Similarly, the National Association of Emergency Medical Technicians has developed the Pre-Hospital Trauma Life Support course for Basic Emergency Medical Technicians S and a more advanced level class for paramedics. The International Trauma Life Support Committee publishes the ITLS Basic and ITLS Advanced courses for pre-hospital professionals as well. This course is based around ADLS and allows the PHTLS trained EMTs to work alongside paramedics and to transition smoothly into the care provided by the ADLS and ATCN trained providers in the hospital. On March 22, 2013 the American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma renamed their annual award for meritorious service in ADLS to the James K. Steiner Award for Meritorious Service in honor of Dr. Steiner's contributions to trauma care. Tertiary Survey Alternatives History